by going over plant structure, including the xylem and phloem inside of plants. So the seed plant structure, there are three principal organs of seed plants. Now those three principal organs are the roots, the stems, and the leaves. So pretty much a review here, something that everybody's pretty uh, familiar with. Now all three are linked together by systems that run the entire length of the plant. These systems produce, store, and transport nutrients and provide physical support and protection. The roots anchor the plants into the ground, they hold the soil in place, and they prevent erosion. Roots work with bacteria and fungi in mutualistic relationships. Now, the mutualistic means they're working together, helping one another. It helps the roots absorb water and transport the nutrients. Then you have the stems. They provide a support system for the plant body, a transport system that carries nutrients, and a defensive system that protects against disease and predators. Stems produce leaves and flowers. Those are the reproductive organs. Now, the support system must be strong to hold up leaves and branches, regardless the size of the stem. It lifts water up to the leaves and products of photosynthesis back down, and we'll talk about how that works momentarily. Now, the leaves is the plant's main photosynthetic organs. The broad, flat surfaces of many leaves may increase the amount of sunlight the plant receives. Now, leaves expose a great deal of tissue to the dryness of the air. Adaptations have been made to protect against water loss. Adjustable pores help conserve water while letting carbon dioxide enter and oxygen leave the leaf. And we have the plant tissue system. Now within the roots, stems, and leaves are specialized tissue systems. We have dermal tissue which covers the plant almost like our skin covers us. We have, uh, they have vascular tissue, which forms a system of pipe-like cells that support the plant and act as a bloodstream. Instead of transferring blood, it's transferring all that water in the nutrients. Ground tissue, which produces and stores food. Now, the dermal tissue consists of a single layer of cells called the epidermis, why, which is why it's called dermal tissue. The outer surfaces of the epidermal cells are covered with a waxy substance called a cuticle. Now, this helps protect against water loss. Some have tiny projections called trichomes. This gives it a fuzzy appearance. Now, in older plants, dermal tissue can be several layers deep and covered with bark. In the roots, dermal tissue includes root hair cells that help absorb water. Now, the vascular tissue supports the plant body and transports water and nutrients throughout the plant, similar to a bloodstream in humans. And there are two kinds of vascular tissue. There's xylem tissue, which is water conducting tissue, and there's phloem, tissue that carries dissolved food. It consists of long cylinder cells that connect almost like pipes. Now, with xylem and phloem, these are two specialized words, and you're going to see them. Uh, you're going to see them again, and you got to know what they mean. So let's take a look at an illustration. So here we have uh, a plant stem that's been uh, cut in half. An illustration, obviously. Notice on the outside here, right under the epidermis, right under that dermal tissue, we have phloem, and inside that we have xylem. So almost like this tube here. If we look at xylem tissue, we can see the structures. We have these openings here and it's always going up and it's always going to be one way. And xylem transfers specifically water. And that water is going to be used for photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, we know that the plant is making food, which is sugar, making those glucose. Well, that's what the phloem deals with. We just said the vascular tissue sends uh, water up and food back down, and that's what the phloem deals with. Phloem is two-way, both up and down, but it's going to go throughout the length of the stem, delivering the food to where it needs to be. So xylem is one way. Phloem can be uh, two-way. It's phloem's dealing specifically with food, xylem's uh, dealing specifically with water. So that is the difference between xylem and phloem when we're talking about vascular tissue. All right, so xylem tracheids, all seed plants have these long and narrow with tough cell walls that support the plants. As tracheids mature, they die leaving only the cell walls. The cell walls contain ligand, which resists water and gives wood much of its strength. Openings in the walls connect cells and allow water to flow from cell to cell. Thinner regions called pits diffuse the water into the surrounding ground tissue. Now we're going to talk about the xylem vessel elements. Angiosperms possess a second form of xylem tissue called a vessel element. They are wider than tracheids and stack 
one on top of another like tin cans. When they die, cell walls at both ends are left with slit-like openings in which water can move freely. So you'll notice here this is talking about water and that's because we're talking about xylem vascular tissue. Now let's talk about phloem. We talked about xylem. We know xylem deals with water. Phloem deals with food. So we have what's called the phloem sieve tube elements. Now phloem cells are alive at maturity. Main phloem cells are sieve tube elements which are arranged end to end uh, to form tubes called sieve tubes. The end walls have small holes through which nutrients move from cell to cell in a water stream. When they mature they lose their nuclei and most other organelles. The phloem companion cells surround sieve tube elements. They keep their nuclei and other organelles their entire life. They support the phloem cells and aid in the movement of substances in and out of the phloem. So we just dove deep into xylem tissue and deep in the phloem tissue looking at these similarities and differences. Okay, moving along, uh, ground tissue. It produces and stores sugar and contributes to the physical support of the plant. The tissue is not vascular or Thermal. The edible portions of plants like potato squash and asparagus are examples of ground tissue. Now most ground tissue consists of parenchyma which have a thin cell wall and a large vacuole surrounded by cytoplasm. Now in leaves these cells contain many chloroplasts and are the site of most of a plant's photosynthesis. And remember inside the chloroplast you're going to find chlorophyll which actually does the absorbing. Now, it may contain two types of cells with thicker cell walls. The calenchyma have strong, flexible cell walls that support plant organs. Chains of these cells make up the familiar strings of celery. Now, sclerenchyma, which sounds more like a disease than anything else, uh, have extremely thick, rigid cell walls that make a ground tissue such as seed coats tough and strong. These fibers are used to make a rope from hemp and also surrounds walnuts, which is why you need a nutcracker to crack through that sclerenchyma. All right, moving close to the end here. Plant growth and meristems. Now, when most animals reach adulthood, they stop growing. The cells are going to keep dividing, but they're going to stop growing. Now, plants always keep growing. Even the oldest trees produce new reproductive organs and new leaves all the time. So how do they keep growing? And the secret is in the meristems. Now, meristems are regions of unspecialized cells in which mitosis produces new cells that are ready for differentiation. They're found in places where plants grow rapidly, tips of stems and roots. Now, the undifferentiated cells they produce are just like the stem cells of animals. So when we're looking at uh, differentiation here and you see uns unspecialized cells, You'll say, that has to sound familiar. Well, it's equivalent to stem cells of animals, but we call these meristems. They're just regions of unspecialized cells in which mitosis produces new cells that are ready for differentiation. And they're going to become specialized and turn in what they need to turn into. All right, apical meristems are meristems that are found in stem or the root. This is because the stem or the root is called the apex of a plant. Now, apical meristems divide rapidly and stems and roots increase in length. When new cells are pushed out of the meristems, they look alike, thin cell walls, and are unspecialized. When they mature, they develop specific structures and functions, and we call this differentiation. They can turn into dermal, vascular, and or ground tissue. And wrapping up here with meristems and flower development. Now, the highly specialized cells found in cones and flowers are produced in the meristems. The cone and flowers are the reproductive organs of seed plants. The flower or cone development begins when the pattern of gene expression changes in a stem's apical meristem. These change the apical meristem of a flowering plant into a floral meristem. Now, floral meristems produce the tissues of flowers, which include the plant's reproductive organs, as well as the colorful petals that surround them. And that's going to be all for this one. If you have any questions, you can always leave a comment, and we'll see you guys next time.